Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Paul Vanowski. Coming at you with another tutorial for Adobe, the Adobe Suite. Um, today we're looking at Lightroom Classic. So a big thing to remember here is that I'm currently working on Lightroom Classic, which I prefer. Um, this is just my take, kind of my workflow, but I really like to have things that are stored on a hard drive or my laptop. I'm not a huge fan of the cloud service. Um, if that's your thing, I would definitely recommend uh, Lightroom CC. Adobe has a really cool setup where you can have Lightroom CC on your laptop, on a tablet, on your phone, and you can access those images anytime. I prefer just to have stuff on a hard drive, kind of centralized like that. So that's why I prefer Classic, but please do whatever works best for your workflow. Today, we are looking at a couple pictures of my friend Danny that I took when I was back home in Portland. I want to keep this pretty simple, um, so we're just going to look at a couple ways to edit your photos. Um, this tutorial is definitely assuming that you have a pretty firm grasp on how to organize your photos, how to import, how to export. That being said, I will be having a podcast come out very soon, so keep an eye out on that, um, where I'll talk about kind of the journey of the photo. Okay, let's dive right in. So. Once you have your, your photos organized, ready to go, go ahead and click the develop at the very top of your program. And that's gonna bring you into this screen. So what's going on here is we have this main window that displays the entirety of the photo. We have a little like other window. It's like a little navigator. Um, basically what you can do with that is when you are loading presets, like I'm kind of just scrolling over, it'll give you a little take before applying it onto the other photo. Up top, we have the histogram. A histogram is very, very helpful. Um, I would definitely encourage you to get, um, have a solid understanding of how to use the histogram, how to view it, how to analyze it. The big things to remember are basically, you wanna be looking at where the rise of a photo is. Um, the further left a photo's histogram leans, that typically means the more dark it is, the more underexposed versus the more right a histogram leans, that's the more exposure there is, it's probably gonna be a little too bright. So what you want is you want it to be right in the middle there, even leaning a little bit left is what I've heard, um, but it very much is photo dependent. So let's go ahead and just dive into a simple edit of one of these photos. Um, let's see, I really like this photo. There's some really good stuff happening here. Okay, cool. So. Once you're in the develop tab, once you have that pulled up in your main screen, let's go ahead and take a look at the, some things that we could do to this photo. So I'm, gonna, I'm taking a look at the histogram up top. Obviously it is a little bit underexposed, which you can clearly tell since you know it's pretty dark, so it can definitely use a little bit more brightening. Something that I do like to do that can be helpful um, is I like to see what Adobe does. If I just say, hey, do an autocorrect, let me know what you think. So I'll click this little button right here in the basic tab and just say auto. And you know, I actually, I like that edit. That's a pretty, it brightens things up and it gives me kind of a baseline. Um, sometimes on other photos, this won't work as well. Um, it's very much up to you. You know, this is a very subjective form of editing. It's very much whatever suits your photo. What time of the day were you shooting in? What lens were you using? Um, I, I shot these on my Fuji X-T4. I believe I was using either a 35 millimeter or my 16 to 80 millimeter, I'm not quite sure. Something to remember is this is your process. Um, you, have, you have full artistic range on how you wanna do this. If you want to manipulate the angles, you're gonna go ahead into this top left header right here. You can see where my mouse is scrolling. But this allows you to adjust angles within the photo. I think this is actually pretty well balanced at the moment. I will probably, again, if you want to use the auto, sometimes it's very helpful just to give you a baseline. Um, after all, it is a computer, so it is, it is doing, you let it do the work for you, is how I kind of like to see it. So he is a little bit out of frame, or not out of frame, which I say. He is a little bit not in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and center him just a bit and probably raise it up a little bit. I actually like that there's, I typically like to have a little bit more sky in my photos, and we've got some good leading lines leading to the subject, him being right there. So I kind of like something right about there. Um, when you're done with the edit, you can click enter or just you know click out of that window that you're in and that'll bring you to whatever you want. Of course, if you wanna go back, it saves where you are. So if I'm like, you know what, I don't like that, you can hit control Z, it will undo your rectangle crops and you can do as you please. 
So I think I'm gonna stick with that, that looks pretty good. So, this is where the fun begins. I mean, exposure, pretty self-explanatory. You can definitely see the histogram in action at the top right there. So an overexposed photo is gonna have your histogram leaning all the way to the right, and an underexposed photo all the way to the left. So I kind of like where they had it. I might brighten it just a little bit right around there. I'm okay with having the sky a little bit washed out. Um, your highlights, you can also observe the histogram there going a little bit, a little bit bonkers. Um, a good practice to get into is you lower your highlights and raise your shadows. That usually gives you a well-balanced image. Um, whites and blacks, you can see all the whites in the photos going up. Same thing if I manipulate the blacks in the photo right there. There we go. That's good. So I kind of like harsh contrast in my images, so I'm probably gonna give it something like that. Texture, this is stuff for more if you're shooting portraits, you know, you can take some texture away or add texture depending on skin tones and how the skin looks and the aesthetic you're going for. Your tone curves are very fun to play with. I highly recommend just kind of getting in there, trial and error, see what happens. Um, typically, you're going for S curves. I mean, that those are your best friends. Um, you can see how I'm manipulating things, but there's some fun stuff to be had, um, especially if you want to be doing some really cool color, like manipulation. I mean, you can get into your reds, your greens, you can dip low and high. You can even add other points on top of it. I kind of liked the look of that for a second there. But anyway, so that is always at your disposal. I'm just hitting control Z to get back to where I was. Um, your HSL color, this can refine the specific colors within the photo. So if I was looking at the red sweater and was like, you know what, I like that hue of red, but I kind of want it a little, little more dampened or a little more purpley. I could even like change the saturation there. So that is also at your disposal. Um, this can be really helpful to make a subject pop. Um, so like he already pops pretty significantly with that red sweater, but if I want to make him pop more, you can totally play around with these. Um, same thing with your color grades right here. So you've got your mid-tones, shadows, highlights. Um, and so f feel free to play around with where you want to put these. You can adjust the intensity of them. Um, those, these colors are very fun to play with. I like to not really have an idea of where I'm going and just let the color, I mean, sorry, excuse me, let the photo almost tell me what it wants. Um, that's a very kind of like <laughs> gooey way of putting it, but it works. It's a really, really helpful way of doing it. And of course, sharpening, all that sort of stuff at the end there. You can do site specific corrections with your brush tool. Um, so there's just plenty of stuff to be playing around, more than I could explain in a short tutorial like this. Um, the final thing I will touch on is your presets in the, on the left. Adobe gives you a great range of presets from black and white colorations to if you wanna get an aged look, a co a, like a cool matte. I actually really like how that looks, that looks fantastic. Um, and then of course you can throw on your edits on top of the preset to change how you want it to look. Um, but I think that's all I have for today, guys. Um, I apologize this was so fast, but definitely keep an eye out for that podcast, which will be coming your way soon. And I look forward to doing some more tutorials in the future. I hope you found this helpful. All right, take it easy, guys. Bye.